in time and have our history video. It's going to be the 1980 Orange Bowl featuring the Florida State Seminoles going against Oklahoma Sooners. And we're going to primarily highlight the play of a gentleman that's been with me for the last two months, the great Bobby Butler. So if you like the video today, please come in and share it. We are 100 yards of football. Let me introduce you to the lineup today. Who's going to be helping me break down the videos? A young man out of North Clayton High School. Excuse me, not high school, but the North Clayton area. He's a renowned football coach in that area. He's coached at Mount Zion, Riverdale High School, Lovejoy. He's one of the most talented coaches on the high school level, and I've seen him going to the next level, on the college level, even on the professional level. My man, Mr. Kevin DeBoer Jones. And the second gentleman who's going to help us highlight the game, he played in the game, actually. And, boy, did he put on a performance. My man out of Florida State University, first-round pick in the 1981 draft, Mr. Bobby Butler by the Atlanta Falcons. So if you like the video today, please come in and share it as we're going to break down the 1980 Orange Bowl game between Florida State and Oklahoma. So, Coach Jones, can you help us get this party started as we talk about that great game on Orange Bowl night in Miami, Florida. I tell you what, I tell you this, listen, watching that game and watching Bobby play and watching how feisty he was on that corner. Amen. And I tell you, one of one of the most prolific running rushing teams in college football history it was you had Billy Sims, David Over, Overstreet, and Stanley Wilson. I mean, those are the three guys right there on the next level that Bobby had to see again on the next level. But watching him get a chance, you know, he's out there on the island by himself. Because, and you still got the triple option coming at you. Man, I tell you what, J.C. Watts, or so should I say House of Representative Watts, uh, uh, the real name Julius Caesar, quarterback for Oklahoma, he was unbelievable. But on the defensive side, it, I, you know, it was very profound when I heard the announcers say, secondary the coach for oklahoma said that the secondary for florida state is one of the best tackling secondaries he has ever seen and i'm gonna tell you what bobby lived up to it the rest of those guys and i tell you what i sat with my popcorn you know car caramel of course and uh i got a chance to watch some great tough football and i tell you what vincent bobby had a little fight in him after he got up and made a play he had a couple of times i saw him stick his head in there and just go inside in the trenches and make some plays. And, and I was astounded. I mean, I know what he did in the NFL, but you know, to watch to watch Bobby run up in there like that, man, that was enjoying Bobby. I thought at the, I thought I was I, it was back live again. You know, all we <laughs> was missing was was all the noise, but I turned the TV up loud. So when I saw you make them plays, Bobby, I jumped up. I didn't jump up too high. I don't have that vertical no more. <laughs> but I but I got a chance to watch you do it. I'm going to say this before we go to Brother Butler. First and foremost, that 1979 team that made it to the Orange Bowl, I'm talking about Florida State, that kind of really set the tone for where we know Florida State of today. And my hat's off to Brother Butler. And like I said, it's been an honor and pleasure to him joining me and you over the last two months. But what I didn't really know, because at the time I was a sophomore at the University of Arkansas, and I told Brother Butler today, we talked earlier. On that level, especially in that 79 season, when you talk about the defensive backfield in college football, all you heard about was Ronnie Lott, Kenny Easley. And me, being at the University of Arkansas and it being a school in the Southwest Conference, all I heard was Vance Brefford out of the University of Texas, Van McElroy out of Baylor. Um, I really didn't really hear a lot about Brother Butler on a national level. But after going back this week and researching the 79 team that he played on and really watching that Orange Bowl game, as you just brought up, Coach Jones, man, he was that dog. It's no question in my mind he was the best defensive back in the country. And the reason I say that, I go back to the 79 team, Florida State, the one that set the tone, not the Deion Sanders team, not the Derrick Brooks team, not here recently, a team that's had all the firepower, Jameis Winston and Chris Winkie. But that 79 team, Brother Butler and his teammates played against some firepower that year. Southern Miss with Hanford Dixon and Sammy Widener. 
that Arizona State team that they beat 31 to 3 in Tampa that year. Man, do you know the type of talent they had on that team? Yeah. Mark Malone, who played in the league. Mike Padgett, that played in the league. Yeah. Gerald Riggs, that played with the Falcons. Mike Richardson, that was with the Chicago Bulls. Vernon Maxwell, that was an All American. They beat them 31 to 3. Right. Then they beat that Florida team that year that had Chris Collinsworth, David yeah, Gallagher. They did Lira. match up. Yep. Then they turned around and beat South Carolina. They had that stud out of Duluth, Georgia, George Rogers. <laughs> yeah. And then on top of that, they beat Mississippi State. And I know a lot about Mississippi State because they're in the same area where I'm from, Memphis, Tennessee. And that team had Glenn Collins, Johnny Cooks, <laughs> Kenny Johnson, that eventually became mm-hmm. Brother Butler's teammate mm-hmm. with the yep. Falcons. Mm-hmm. Marty McDowell, um, Danny Young, that was an outstanding receiver. And, man, to beat all that talent that year, and then the young man, Coach Jones, that we're looking at right now, and his stats that year, oh, my God. Yeah. Six interceptions, 30 tackles, five block kicks. I'm getting excited just thinking about it. <laughs> so he roared it, and today the floor is yours, Brother Butler. Take us <laughs> on that Saturday night because, man, you were. In 1979, in my yeah. opinion, you was the best defensive back in the country. Now you well, have a ball, sir. I, I tell you, they, we had some great players in the country. Roland James, who went to Tennessee, was a great player that year. Um, we, we had the cornerback out of Alabama who played for the Dolphins, um, Don McNeil. We had some great talent in the country. Uh, Johnny Johnson played at Texas. Johnny there were some great guys in that 79 group because that was my junior year. But I got to say, that season – was the year that my name really went out there. I think that 1979-1980 Orange Bowl had everything to do with me being drafted in the first round in 1981 because of the talent that we played. And to add to that, Vincent, we played LSU in Baton Rouge, right? And we beat them on national TV. And we were undefeated. We were 11-0. We're the foundation, and, and, and I agree with you, we were the foundation of what we know now to be Florida State football. Before, you know, we had all the great players. Coach Bowden and his staff recruited an excellent class when they recruited my class. Our five-star monster was Ron Simmons out of Warner Robins, Georgia. Number 50. Number 50. Yeah. Bench pressed over 500 and ran a 4-5-40. I mean, incredible. But – we had great coaching. You know, when you listen to Coach Bowden, when he recruited us, and when you read his book or anytime you get a chance to talk to him, he said the key to his success was not anything he did, but it was the staff that he had working under him. Wow. He always said that if you want to win games, you want to be successful as a head coach, you got to make sure you hire the right guys. You got to have the right guys on your team, Coach Jones, right? Amen. Let the church say amen on that. Church, amen. And we had a guy. Um, God bless his heart, um, uh, one of my high school coaches who eventually uh, started coaching at Florida State, who recruited me by the name of Steve Harden. He passed this morning. Um, God bless him and his family. Great man. um, Great man of God. Great man of character. Guy who really helped me develop me in high school as a player. And then the defensive coordinator at Florida State was a guy by the name of Jack Stanton, who still lives in Tallahassee. That that, That was before Mickey Andrews coach. Okay, gotcha. He was the guy that got everything out of our defense. That particular year, that undefeated season, we had the number one defense in the nation. Wow. Wow. Nobody had ever scored a touchdown on us, Coach, the whole season in the fourth quarter until that Orange Bowl game. All right. Wow. So that's how we that's how we were doing. And so um it, it was a great, it was a great time. For me, and then for another thing for me, the motivation was nobody expected much from us, but we put it together. The first year at Florida State, we were 10 and 2. We won the Tangerine Bowl. My second year, my sophomore year, we were 8 and 3. We didn't go to a bowl game, coach. 8 and 3. 8 and 3. And then my junior year, the first undefeated season in Florida State history, 11 and 0. And then we had a chance that year to get into the big time. That was our first opportunity to play big time games. Right. 
We played in the Orange Bowl. No Florida State team at that time had ever played in a bigger bowl game. Wow. And here we was, January 1st, playing Oklahoma with all that great talent, and they had some monster talent. You know, and, and, and I tell you, I was so fired up that night. I, I can remember like it was last night, Coach. When I tell you I was jacked up, I was jacked up for a lot of reasons, right? right. But the one reason I was jacked up in that game was um, you'll, you'll love this story. <clears throat> Two nights before that game, we had the Orange Bowl parade. Right. I, sh I shared this with Vincent today. We had the Orange Bowl parade, and there were some beautiful females sitting next to us. And, you know, we didn't know who they were. just beautiful women, right? And so we started this conversation bickering back and forth, and we found out that these women were the wives of Billy Sims, David Overstreet. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> right. Yeah, they, they, they want, right? And okay. so the bickering and bantering started at that parade with them. And so I'm quiet. I'm saying nothing. Coach, I'm just sitting there. And all of a sudden, Billy Sims' wife say, well, what you play? And I said, well, I play corner. She said, you a starter? I go, yeah, I'm a starter. She said, my husband going to run all over you in the game. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I didn't say anything wrong to her, but that uh -huh. turned up the dial. So when I got in the game, when you saw me making tackles, and I started standing over Billy, start pointing the finger. Yes, you did. I was jacked up. I mean, That's I, you got now. I, coach, I was on fight. I was on fight. And here's you talked talk to him a couple of times. Yeah, you but I was over there about 40 miles north of Miami. Okay. And the thing at Delray Beach was, you know, winning championships. You know, the all-black high school, Carver High won state titles back-to-back. -back. And then when we got in high school, I played in, in my high school, four years in high school, we played in three state title games, lost them all. So here it was, we were undefeated. Even though we are not ranked one or two, had we won that game, we could have announced ourselves as national champions. Right. You know, and probably the AP poll or UPI, one of those polls would have picked us as right. national champions. So I was playing for for all the marbles, the way I looked at it. Right. So I, had to, I had to give my all. And so it was a great game. It was a great night. It was the first time we played in a big time. And, and, I, and I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. I thought that, Bobby, I thought that, you know, from a uh, scheme standpoint, it was really, I watched how they doubled and triple teamed Ron Simmons all yeah. night. Mm -hmm. and, and there were some times when I saw you and, you know, the big thing about the triple option is you have to stay disciplined in your assignment. Yes, you do. And I, you know, us older coaches, we got some tricks to the trades now that we teach that I've learned from some veteran coaches mm -hmm. how in practice you learn how to work against, you know, coach against the triple option. Mm -hmm. Somebody has the dive back. Somebody has the quarterback. Somebody has the pitch man. Now, any given time, they can lull you to sleep. And then next thing you know, it takes one play for them to bump the head on the goalpost. Exactly. Okay? So you guys had a tremendous uh, adverse situation because you don't face a lot of teams running triple option back in those times with teams that you played against. Mm -hmm. So here mm -hmm. you are playing against three top running backs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are a lot of times when I was watching you, it looked like sometimes you had that literally – Either you you and the safety inverted sometimes because it brought you into the box. Right. And and it brought you in the box against some of those big linemen. And mm -hmm. I watched this a couple of times go on a dog stunt straight up in the hole. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a lot of times they don't even ask cornerbacks to do that in, in right. today's football. Right. First of all, mm -hmm. they tell the safeties to do it. So right. the fact that you uh I, I you know, I didn't look like you were 185 pounds back then, but <laughs> but I you know fight. And, and the hits that you brought mm -hmm. to the table inside that box, mm -hmm. you know, we call it seven down formation. When you mm -hmm. eight down, when you have all those linemen on the line mm -hmm. and you just got the quarterback and, and you got the running backs and it's downhill plays. Right. So having to go from going in the box mm -hmm. and it looked like you were inverted sometimes, right. Mm -hmm. You know, which is amazing because mm -hmm. nowadays it's, it's more of the, you know, corners don't invert like that. Right. You know, so, you know, you had to be a, a big dog mm -hmm. to even, you know, for the defensive coordinator to even scheme up for you to be inside the box Absolutely. like that because, mm -hmm. you know, your assignment changed. Mm -hmm. So for you to have to have one play where you're out against the split end mm -hmm. and coverage 
Then you got to fill the alley sometimes. Mm -hmm. Then you have to come in the box. That's right. I mean, that's truly amazing. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a multifaceted thing to ask a, a college football player to do mm -hmm. back in 1980. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not even heard of today because number one, a lot of teams, with the exception of your military schools and a couple other schools, right. use right. the triple option. Right. But you were in the dogfight from day one. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I tell you, and, and here's the other thing: not just that coach, the fact that. They were better athletic-wise. They were better athletes than we were on defense. Ooh. So you think about who's got J.C. Watts, who's got David Overstreet, and then who's got Billy Sims on the pitch. I mean, we were at a disadvantage, right? And so J.C. Watts was really the catalyst yes. in that game because yeah. we really could not stop him, right? And right. so had we had a chance to, to, to hem him in, we would have had a chance to do some things, but we, we were we were outperformed. They were a better team by far. We were outmatched. But one thing, one thing you can see, we had a lot of fight in us, and yeah. they took away our best defensive player, Ron Simmons. Yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah. And and when they took him away, one thing I loved about watching the game is you always tried to make the tackle. Today's cornerbacks, they like to work on the strip of the stripping on the ball first, which mm -hmm. I know it's hard, but still gotta lay the wood. You got to lay the wood, coach. And when you're a hunt coach, I weighed at that time 150 pounds. Now, I disguised myself with shoulder pads that were a little larger. <laughs> you know, let, let me tell you something, coach. From the time I arrived on Florida State campus being recruited, I got to tell you this, I was hiding myself. I was told by the late, great Steve Harton, who I just told you passed this morning, when I went to meet Coach Bowden um, for the first time, I, I had to put on two jackets and I was not allowed to take them off in the meeting room with him because he told Coach Bowden I was 180 pounds. So I couldn't take my clothing off so you can really see my frame. Yeah. And then they got upset when I got that sign when I got to training camp when I was a freshman, they found I was 145 pounds. And I didn't know this at the time, but you know, later on, some of the coaches would tell me the fights they had in meetings that only weighed 145 pounds. And that, wow. you know, I, that I was that small, I would have never got a chance to play this. Mm. But praise be to God. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. Do all things. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. And that As we uh, wrap up this video, one mm -hmm. thing I'm going to say about that Florida State team that played in the 80 Orange Bowl against Oklahoma, that team set the tone for what we know now as Florida State University being ranked in the top 10. So today, I like to say it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. Coach Jones, outstanding job today. Brother Butler, no question about it. You was the best defensive back in the country in the 1979 season. So to the people out there that's watching 100 Yards Football today, if you like the video today, please come in and share it. We surely appreciate your time and patience of watching this outstanding history video. I'm Vincent Turner. Joining me today was Kevin the Bull Jones and my man Bobby Butler. Enjoy the day and enjoy the weekend and stay safe out there. We are 100 yards of football. God bless.